Hello everybody and welcome to session 4 of the Unity Study Jam and in this session we will be looking into what C Sharp scripting is all about and how to make your game more versatile with that. So this is the solution to last session's challenge and it's just a simple demonstration of how you could do it. Um, again, creativity is all up to you. So now that that's over, let's dive into the topic for today's session which is going to be um, scripting using C Sharp. So before we go into that, why do you need scripting? So in general, we have covered a lot of topics so far like how to import assets, how to place them on the screen and then uh, basics of animation and all of that but if you want to streamline all of that and make it a functioning game to add that functionality you need scripting let's say you made an animation now but you have used one animation for a particular character which will work if you want to go further and control various animations let's say your character is not just going to walk in a straight line always it wants to jump run all of that and if you want to switch between that based on user input you need scripting for that and that is going to be the essence of scripting at least in unity uh, in this session we won't go into very deep concepts of scripting like involving animation state uh, like further changes in the state graph and all of that that we'll probably do in another weeks where we learn intermediate stuff for now let's just explore how to create a script how to use it in visual studio code and then how you would um, run it in unity and check the output and maybe do basic uh, skills of basic um, output of scripting let's try that out today so first off just um, right click over here on your um, assets pane or your project window and then go to c sharp script and then you'll have you have to give a name over here since we're just trying to learn basics i'll just call this um, basics and then press on enter and before that you can also um, create a folder for it if you want just to make sure everything is organized and how it looks so scripts then just move the c sharp script into your folder okay so when you basically click on the script right now um, let this finish loading yeah so when you click on the script right now you can actually see what's there in that particular file over here it'll just give you an overview of whatever is already there so this is by default the code that will exist in uh, or the code that's generated by unity which will be there for default irrespective of when you create a script so the first and fundamental thing that one needs to remember is the file name that you have here should be the same as the class name only then your script would work so anytime you you find an error somewhere or that your script is not working make sure that both these names match it's very important so that's the first thing after that there are like lot of um, lines over here right so let's just understand them bit by bit but for that, let's view it in a more um, uh, easier uh, or rather in an editor. So let's go to, for that, let, we are going to use VS Code today. And if you don't have VS Code already, you might need to get it. 
so to make vs code as the default editor you have to go to preferences and then external tools so if it would usually be opened by file extension you can change it to visual studio code and then close this and then double click on the file here and yeah, as you can see it will open it in vs code now so we'll start from the top so this is basically uh, what you would call your header files for all those of you who have studied um, like languages like python c c++ you would know how you would get header files there just to get functionalities these are some of the basic header files you need for it to work and it's by default a part of your script then you have your class this is basically how a class would work in c sharp and inside that you will have two functions those functions basically help determine how your code should work or how the functionality should be implemented and this is the most uh, important thing that we have to know what these two functions are so start is basically the function that will run the first time your code is executed so the moment you uh, play your game this is the function that will be invoked but every subsequent call after that will will basically give a call to update how update works is it calls the function every frame so whatever you type inside the update function it keeps getting up like it keeps getting reflected on every single frame so now that you know this you might already have an idea about where you would use both so this is like a one time thing an update when you want to change something constantly throughout your game uh, before we go into uh, actually doing something with both these functions in terms of the game let's just understand the difference also based on their outputs so for example let's say you want to type something on your um, console so for that you can just directly put print and then some text so let me just call this start just to indicate that the start uh, is being called over here and make sure we give a semicolon and then for update let's just write the text here as update and then control s save your file head back to your unity project and you have to wait for this to finish uh, compiling once that's done you can check if all the changes are done by seeing if they are being reflected here if at all there are any errors in your program that would be visible over here uh, with a red color or if there's a warning there'll be a yellow color text so now we are going to go to the console window finally so the output when you when you give print that output basically comes to your console window so let's try running the game and see what happens right so it's not visible here and that was expected the reason why it didn't work was because the script is only recognized when it is attached to one of your uh, game objects over here so mo uh, most of the things that you would use in your hierarchy window are called, called game objects be it your 3d um, objects assets your camera all of those come under a category called game objects and it only works when it's attached with one so how would you attach it so for now let's just say i want to attach it to the plane usually when you attach a script to something there is some meaning to it since we're just testing this code out let me drag this let me just drag this over here put it in the plane and how would you verify if that's done click on plane and you could see that this was aut added over here automatically so now that we know this let's click on play as you can see the values are changing right now let me just stop it over there and then this is the value that this is the text that we wanted to print update so go right back to the start see the first time the script executed it printed start every subsequent print statement was called from the update function so this is how both the functions work and this was just a demonstration of that now that we know that let us dive into making use of this so now let me just remove the comment lines here
so um, I'm going to basically add the game object over here game object is just like how you have integers data types like integers float boolean game object is also something like that so i'm going to declare a game object called mouse right now and then a game object called play one thing that you need to remember here though is to give the access specifier it's very important you do that so it could either be public or private uh, on the broadest sense so i'm going to give public as the mouse is public and the plane as private just to tell you how it um, works differently uh, with respects to unity so now that we have done that let's try to use this power of uh, scripting to make some changes so what i'm going to do is not write anything in start because the change that you do when you do it in start is a one time thing to show you how the change can be done constantly i'm going to do something in the update function so for that i am going to try to move my mouse that's the goal so mouse dot and you know that there's something called the transform properties transforms basically the rotation position and scaling so basically i'm going to use transform dot position so this is what i'm going to try to change and then plus equal to so that the position keeps updating from where it previously was so right now i'm going to transform the position and use um, new vector 3 vector because um, the position has three parameters which is x y and z and if i want a reference to all the three i need to use a vector or i could just use one of the directions by saying position dot x dot y and dot z that is also possible so let me just say x um, is zero and then don't forget to put f over here uh, to represent floating numbers and once you do that press ctrl s then press ctrl s and head to your unity screen and as you can see the change has been reflected over here so what we'll do now is click on the script um, and then what we're going to see is how we're going to attach the mouse to this particular script so for that i just uh, imported or i just took the mouse and placed it on my environment over here and the script is currently attached to plane so i'll go over there as you can see mouse is visible over here and it is acquiring a game object as an input that it said none because you have not assigned any but there was also another one that we created called plane but that's not visible as i had mentioned before this is where access specifiers come in since we gave mouse as public it's visible here and since plane was private it's not so let me just assign the mouse character to this so i could just drag it and place it over here and that's done um i'll change my main camera so that i, I can view this And then move my mouse okay so this is this is technically how it would look um move that up a bit more yeah so that that looks fine so what i'm going to do now is try just playing the script to see what happens okay so now that looks good um let me try playing the game now so as you can see the character is constantly moving in your um, z direction and it's being updated 0 0.05 every frame so if you want to make your character go fast 
naturally you will have to change this value here you could check this out now see so that is the basics of um, scripting let's try to take it one step further so you see the mountain here right I don't want this mouse to go beyond the mountain so what I'm going to do I'm going to take the mouse a little over there so I want the mouse to start over here and then I want it to go all the way up to here so this is basically just note like the z value maybe uh, let me say I want to stop I wanted to stop at 61 so I want the mouse to be here initially and stop when it reaches 61 now that's the goal we have so you already know when you want something to work based on a condition you would use something called an if statement so what I would do is I'll just wrap this around an if statement that's all so I just need to check if the value is exceeding 61 or not or the value of z is exceeding 61 or not so if is less than 61 I want this particular action to happen then I put control s and I'll reduce the speed again head back to unity and click on play now see the character stop moving uh, once it reached a point so these are all the basic things that you need to know for making uh, a workable script and using it in your project and if you want to know there are many features that you can actually use in scripting we just saw how to use a game object and how to change its position if you would go to unity documentation there's something called the scripting api actually so let's just unity um, scripting api and then just click on this one this is basically the official documentation for unity scripting so as you can see it has all the features that unity scripting supports so for example if you want to the, the one that we did right now was transform so if you want to look at transform it will tell you how to use that on your particular and give you a code also as an example so this is basically how transform works so now what your game is actually doing is that particular object will keep moving in that direction without any um, like without any interruptions when update is called and when when so basically now what's happening is your game object keeps moving in the z direction without any interruption or user interference here let's say but that's not how your game is going to work so let's say you want to uh, add some user interaction so when a user presses a particular key then only it should move so that is something which is very important so for that you just need to put input dot get key of key code dot up arrow so what you're doing is when you're entering when you're clicking on a particular key and the, if that particular key is basically the up if that particular key is basically your up arrow only then your object will move in the z direction so let's wait for this to load and then I'm going to click on play right now so as you can see the game has started but your character is just still let me click on the up arrow right now so I am pressing on the I am like clicking on the up arrow and removing my hands that's why it 
move so i'm going to press on it continuously now see it keeps moving since we have the restriction of stopping once it reaches 61 that also changes and that brings us towards the end of this session so in summary this session we had uh, looked into the basics of scripting why we need scripting and then how unity uses uh, all this header files how it understands game objects how you would add that to your project and then run the script so with this information and we also looked at how you could use the scripting api the uni unity documentation for um, getting more suggestions to add to your game so with all of this you would be able to for now build a semi working game with just this information like you could play around with this input you can add more game objects bring in more features and with that you could have a rough working game by the end of this week next week we'll basically be looking at looking at a little more advanced concepts like lighting camera and also intermediate c sharp scripting where we'll be dealing with adding animations to your script as well and how you can manage all of your animations uh, and it wouldn't look uh, just like your objects moving so over here the character just seems to be moving in a direction and it doesn't look like it's walking with when you use animations and scripting together you can achieve that realism which is what we'll be trying to do next week we are halfway through the study jam at this point and we hope to see you in the next one